everyone, this is Brooke, and we are on agriculture land today, and we are going to be doing a chat, um, coffee chat, um, just an update chat, and, um, you know, and I actually got on here, and I kind of drove around just to... I guess just a thing, and I just needed a time to just breathe and just relax and just chill, and I needed that, and we will take a little bit of a look around the farm. Oh wow, nice and well, it'd be nice if we could use it. And let's see what we got over here. We got a kid's sandbox, sadly my kids won't use it. And we got a fire pit. Oh, nice. And what the heck is this? Okay, so what happened to this? I don't know, but you don't belong there. So, uh, but, like. <laughs> and we have a grill. Nice. And a little swing here. So, let's see if is there a sleep trigger. Let's go around the corner. There we are, there's a sleep trigger. <laughs> and nice pretty spring flowers. I wanna smell right now. So, I don't know where I drove my truck around, but I'm gonna scroll through. There we are at the dock, I guess you would say, at the, where you dock your boat. What a beautiful area. So I'm gonna, this is, this. Did I, I don't know if I said it, but this is agriculture land. This is a new map that's on the mod hub. And I don't know what these are. I don't know why you would use those. I don't know. And is this Switzerland? Like it says oil of Switzerland. Hmm. I don't think this is actually Switzerland, but I could be wrong. I don't think I looked at where this location is. <laughs> and that could be a problem. So if you, just a disclaimer, disclaimer, if you hear noise in the background, it's either one of my kids, it's spring vacation, and they're living their best life playing video games, what they've always wanted to do, so. <coughs> so, we're going to start this chat out uh, with just a little Easter, Easter sadness, and didn't think I'd start out like that, but it did. So Sunday, I had a pretty good day. My kids had a bunch of candy, and as with candy, it ends with your stomach hurting. So I tried to warn my kids, but, you know, they didn't listen to me. Um, you know, most kids don't listen when you say stop eating candy. Um, you know, that's the sad part. <laughs> <laughs> they decide they're just going to enjoy candy. Let's see if we look over here. I think there's just a lot of boats. Okay. So we're just going to walk down this a little bit. And so that began my spring break. And that began my journey of having... Mm, sorry. I had so much coffee. My, I don't know. I've had a lot of heartburn problems. So I have to try to not drink as much coffee. But anyways... So, as I was saying, start my journey with playing video games like for spring break and Easter. And I did that Sunday. So, it was actually a pretty good day. So, Monday came and it started as... Uh, it started with another pet passing away. One of my other son's guppies we found in the filter um, gone. And we don't know what happened. He was doing great the day before, so, you know, pets die, and it's, uh, it's been that, that year, it's been that, uh, it's been that spring of animals dying for our family, so that's really hard, so, so that started, and, um, you know, I didn't think anything of it, and then, um, later that day, nice, um, I don't know, let me put up the map here, just get a view, I don't know if I want to make it that big, 
then you're, all you'll see is the map. So, let's just go this way a little bit. I think there's stuff here. I don't even know, like, I just kind of drove around. I was kind of sad. So, let's see what is up here. And then we'll get back to ch chatting. So, Monday rolled ar around, and, you know, sad. My son was really upset that another fish died. Um, you know, growing up as a kid, I had a bunch of guppies and mollies. Never had any... Bro, bro I'm running into the side of the... You're always running into things. Let's just come over here and just chill for a second. What is this over here? Oh, like a little picnic area. Nice. Cool. I love that. It's beautiful. Maybe this is like a store? Yeah, I think it's like a cell point, but I don't see no cell point on it. But I see a dot. That's just super weird. Maybe the dot's up there. I think up there, I think that's a cell point where you drop yourself off. I think that's up there. Not a cell point. I don't think this one is. I think this is just one of those, you know, buildings. So, as the day went on, I noticed my dog was acting funny and she wouldn't. Oh gosh. <laughs> Is this another cell point? I think so, or maybe this is production. I didn't really look at the map. Oh! Tricky! Oh gosh, it's good. What's that floating? What the heck is that? What is that? Oh. <laughs> is that a piece of bread? <laughs> Brick, what did you do? <laughs> the floating piece of bread. Let's get out of here before they call the police. Let's I go. We gotta get out of here. Before the police get called. Oh, and I can go through the hedges. That is another nice thing. Okay. I think this is like a cell point, maybe. But, anyways, so I noticed my dog was acting funny. She just wouldn't eat. And I was a little concerned. And this is another cell point. Or, yeah, I think that's a cell point. I don't know, we'll look at the production in a minute here, as soon as we kind of drive around here. This is like, I think this is the end of the map. So, just swing around everyone, oh, I don't know if this is going to be such a good idea. Alright, so maybe not. Did pretty good at that, but we're just going to this way. I do believe this is in Europe. It seems a little bit like a European map. I think that's another cell point. I think that's is either production or a green. Sorry, green. So I noticed, like I said, she stopped eating and then she had a seizure. So oh, what am I doing, bro? I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm sorry to say. It's so I think this is a production. Kind of in the production area, then. What the heck are we doing, Brooke? I don't know. Look at all this. Look at all this. Cargo. Yeah, we should probably get out of this area. So, I noticed she had, she had a seizure, and after that, after that, she, it takes her, it takes her about four to five hours to get back, and then I notice now she doesn't just, dis you know, the hardest part is this is, I think, your forestry is the part that she's not the same and it, it really makes me cry because I'm, I just think of myself as kind of selfish for hanging out to her. This is production or uh, cell point. So, I think we're back in the same place. And, you know, I look at pets a different way now. I feel like I prolong your life and being selfish. I selfishly, I don't know where to go. Let's go this way, I guess. And we're just, 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 just going around in circles. Right and I feel like I've, you know, I feel like my opinion of having pets is, you know, they always, a pet will 
every pet no matter what pet their 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 destiny is will always be they will pass away whether you prolong their life or you know the outcome but you know and I feel like I've been kind of a selfish I want to get out of the country a little bit so I can cry and talk been a little bit of a selfish person because I feel like I've honestly I just want to be over here for a minute while I talk. I honestly studied really hard to try to find ways to prolong my dog's life. Whether it be to change her diet to something different or to give her the best possible life as, you know, in talking to vets and, you know, she hates, I was giving her the really high-end dog food and she wouldn't eat it and the vet was like, she doesn't like that grain food, grain-free stuff. She wouldn't even touch it she just like go with her nose and like pick at it she put different pieces out and leave the rest and you know come to find out that the vet said well you know she's had her best years let her eat what she wants and you know you know you know for her rest of her life so I did that I my dog she loves kibbles and picks and you know a few years ago I oh I was trying to climb you and a few years ago, I wouldn't have thought anything about giving my dog, you know, um, kibbles and bits because, you know, I thought that all dog food had good stuff in it. And then looking back now, seeing that, um, um, a dog food has a lot of fillers and food that dogs shouldn't have, but, you know, my dog is, she's almost 12 this year, so... And, you know, and she's actually, since eating that dog food, she's actually put it, put on more weight. And she's been, she seems to be in better health. But, you know, since her seizure now, all she does is, um, she won't tell me she has to go to the bathroom. And she'll just pee in her, her little doggy area. And, um, she doesn't even tell me she goes poo anymore. And she's really sad and, you know, and she barely drinks or eats and, you know, and, and, and I just, after my dog is gone, I don't want to get another dog because I know that I can't handle this. I can't, you know, I can't, you live through the first years as being, well, she's a puppy. Well, yeah, the puppy stage stayed, but then the puppy stage was gone. And then, you know, knowing that she's just going to go, is just heartbreaking because I remember as a puppy. <laughs> So, so that happened Monday and, you know, Tuesday came and it was all good. You know, my dog, she felt better and everything was going well. I was, I was going to get back on farm sim and, you know, play again. And I had some extra videos I had taped a few days ago. So I had all my videos all set to go. So I was, I had, you know, for my channel because I didn't feel like, I truthfully didn't feel like getting on and talking or anything. And then my son came to me later that day and says, Mommy, you have to see this. The, um, the Molly bullied the other Molly and, um, you have to come look at what happened. And, <sighs> just a disclaimer, what I'm saying now is, it's, it's very graphic and, and I just want to, a disclaimer for y'all. If you don't want to hear it, then you can bypass this anyway, so. Um, I, um, went in there and I saw the Molly, she was struggling on the, on the side of the tape. And this is the 10 gal my son had, and, um, slowly all the fish had been dying in the tank. And the Molly, the white, she's a balloon Molly, and she's been very aggressive to the other fish, and we now know, we're pretty sure that she was aggressive and attacked all the other guppies, and that's why they died. Because they had some missing fins and missing, you know, front fins and back fins and chew look like they're chewed up and um i went in there and i saw her i just broke my heart she was missing her eye and the side of her was all like bitten off and you know the kindest thing we could have done is you know, the kind of thing is we could do for her was put her down and if if you if you guys don't know the kindest way to put 
a fish or an animal like that down his clove oil. So if you have a betta that's struggling or not doing well, or you can put him down with clove oil and that is the, the, the most humane way. People put him in the freezer, but I can't do that. I, I can't do that. And, you know, see the fish like that, just heartbroken. And I just, I look at every single pet I've taken in, you know, some have had good outcomes and some, you know, only live for months or weeks or, you know, and then I think I can hear the church bell. <laughs> and some of their outcomes didn't go as well as I wanted. And I feel like that really, it really, really, traumatize me to not want to get any more furry pets at least <laughs> or any birds or anything because for that fact well my kids they have like my, my daughter has rats and mice that's just that's another story in itself I'm heartbroken to see them go they go but <sighs> but i'm going to tell you a little bit of something when i was a kid that happened that traumatized me and i didn't want to help animals after that I didn't I don't think I've ever helped an animal after that when I was a kid because of what I went through and so um, when I was a very, a very, I was probably 10 or 11, um, my dad, he worked at a place and they found a bird nest and these contractors weren't very nice, they were just going to throw it in the trash and I don't really know, maybe they could have found, um, the mom or you know could have tried saving him but they didn't want to so my dad knew that I loved animals and so we brought him home to me to take him in. and one of them didn't survive but the other one did and that little bird imprinted on me and that little bird loved me I I started um you know when it got bigger I'd take it outside and you know just give it freedom and put it in the trees and get it used to you know, nature. If you guys know, even when a baby becomes a fledgling, the parent's still there to take care of the baby for a while. They teach it how to fly, um, to fend, fend for food, and do all things birds do. So I was that, I was that bird's mom. I was that, that little bird trusted me so much. I'd put it in a tree and that little bird would call me and would fly to me. Maybe it was just a starling to everybody else, but to me, that was my baby. I loved that little bird. But I knew a time where I would have to let that bird go. And I knew that releasing it would be the best thing possible because it, it, it shouldn't be kept in it. It's a wild animal. So I was getting used to it being out in the wild. And there was one day I just left it up in the tree. And I just came in to get water and I was not even gone for five minutes and I come back and I heard the baby crying. And I heard it called me. And I ran over and I saw that a gardener snake had got his, his whole mouth on top of the baby bird. The baby bird was crying. I'm sorry, car, you know. Not much of a tour, is it? And I had, I had was, I did what a mom would do, is I was so bad. I took that snake and I pulled it right off the baby bird. And the baby bird acted like nothing happened. It was, it was started chirping and comes right over to me. And I freaking threw that snake far as, far as the eye could see away from my baby bird. And that from now on, it was two whole weeks I just wouldn't let by itself. I knew that. I just, I couldn't. I had to teach it to live by itself, but I, I was there for it. I, I was like, you know, and, but there was one day my mom said, my mom said, you have to, you have to let it have more freedom. You have to let it, you just have to let it go. We went to church and I got it to feel cool. I drove up there. And instead I couldn't leave it up there. Came home and I kept calling for it. And I it never called back to me. And I knew either it had flown 
the way or something about it. And guys, the sad reality is that the wild is not... It's not a friendly place. The wild, there is, there's enemies waiting to devour those animals. And a lot of times, birds don't live past two years. And a lot of times why mice have all babies because they don't live very long. And the sad reality was is that I knew that there was a possibility that the baby wouldn't make it. But I wouldn't let that sink in because I, I had to say that thing. But after that, I never, I never ever once wanted to take in another animal. I never did. And I regret that. I regret that I... I didn't, because it was probably animals that could have, you know, I probably could have worked at a re an animal rehab place. And, but, you know, the reality is, as you see going on, I see what's going on now, the animal activists attacking SeaWorld for having, having this, having orcas and tanks. But the sad reality is, is, if you let them out in the wild, will they not be imprinted on humans? The sad reality, will they find a pod to be happy? No, because think about it, they're, they're well fed, they're well loved. And when you release them in the wild, the chances of living is, is not great. And people think by letting an animal free in the wild, they're gonna have a wonderful life. Not always true, some, some cases are true. But look at Free Will, he only lived, I believe, about four years. I think maybe a little over four. But he died of, I think, con contracting something in the wild. But he always came back to people. There was, there was circumstances where he'd go and he'd come near people. And so I just, my, my take of pets is, is different than it was before. I think that's the other thing. And I now, I now just, when I take a pet in, I just, I just think about them dying, you know, and I just, I can't, like, it's so sad, my kids, though, I think my kids will always have pets, so, but I, once my dog, my other pets are gone, my older pets, I don't think I'll be personally getting another animal, I will be having virtual pets that can stay with me forever, and I don't have to say goodbye, because goodbye is a hard thing, so, <laughs> so sorry everyone for the sad the sad video and um you know and then after that I had a couple instances where I was playing a video game and I couldn't feel my hand. My fingers were numb, so I don't know what's going on there, so and I have these this weird rash I got too, so and I do believe that I'm having um, some um, deficiencies in iron and stuff. I've had some problems with that, so. Uh, so, that is part of my vacation, and um, today is Wednesday, so that was just a day ago when the pet died, and I just, I couldn't get back at God Farm Sim, and I'm probably doing a really crappy job at <laughs> doing today. So. And I just wanted to do a shot. You know, just come on here and be, um, tell you what's been going on. And then, you know, I um, also want to thank you all for your support and watching my, my channel and subscribing because it means a lot to me. And, you know, it means a lot that I can get out of here and say thank you. So, let's try. Okay, so you heard all the all the news. So I need to get on some other games too. I have to get on uh, Farms Dynasty again. Do some more videos, and I gotta get on Raven. What is this over here? What is that? But what are you comb doing over? Can I pick you up? Oh, I can. Oops. Uh, I Let's see if we can- oh, I want to throw it. Okay, can we pick you up? Mm, yes, we can. I don't know how- where's the throw button? I think that's the throw button. No. <laughs> okay, let me see if I get this right again. My controller sometimes, I think. 
Nope, it's not going <laughs> to do it. It gets me right back. But, um, that being said, oh, look at this little area over here. This is so cute. I haven't much, much seen much of this. Look at this. This is, what is this area? This is just cute over here. Okay, a little boat area. Um, let's look at the map here quickly, and uh, we'll have a quick, quick look at what the crops are. Wheat, barley, granola, oat, corn, sunflower seeds, soybean, potatoes, sugar beets, sugar cane, cotton, sorghum, grapes, olives, popular, and grass, and old sea radish. Nothing different. All right, so let's get to, wow, that's a big map. So, there's purchases, interlay city in, input, there's a central grain mill, there's a hay barn probably where you sell point oil mill where probably production what is this a stadium a rugby stadium i want can we go see this i want to go see this let's go visit here quickly oh <gasps> look at this wow <laughs> those big balls we could take the big balls in here and play with the big balls that'd be so cool all right let's see we did that area what's over here there's a pig all right, why won't it let me click? All right, it won't let me click on there. That's so weird. There's school, heating plant. There's something with horses, but it won't let me do it. There's a windmill farm. A wind farm, I should say. Can you get, let me see, let me see that. You can't, let's see, can you go there? A wind farm. What the heck? There's no wind farm. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh! I don't... Maybe you build your own wind farm. Hmm. I don't know anything about this. That's weird. Alright, let's see. Let's come over here. There's cow, animal merchant, which is the animal dealer. Gas station. Sh sugar mill. Uh, bakery. A tailor shop. Nice. A grain mill question wind farm so like i said i think that's where you build your wind farm maybe um great processing um where you do um wood you go shop um i don't know i think that's a shop um cow barn that's your farm major heap manure heap oh my goodness and you have your buildings um, environment. I don't know what this is. What is this? Can I go there? Oh, is this go karts? What the heck? Nice go karts. Oh my gosh, I love this. Remember, Bernice, look at there's a go kart. You can have fun now. Yay! <laughs> so that's a little bit of the look at um on the map. Let's go to the farm quickly and have a tour. Sorry, everyone, I'm a little. Okay, so we bought this. <laughs> we own this. This is where your silos are. Um, your um bunker where you can put your si silage. I think this is your poop area. <laughs> um, you got some equipment. Nice. Um, you got some storage. Um, you got more equipment. Let's see. We got, and I actually went here before only because I was trying to, I was starting to video, do a video, and I was driving around, and I was just crying through the whole video. This is your cow barn. <gasps> Look at the little piggy. Well, it's not really piggy. It's deceiving. It's cows. And then you get um, a cow barn, and then you get some stuff you own. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything. Hopefully, I'm not. Um, so, you pick up your milk trigger animals where you can put your cows um and this i don't think we have a house i think that's it yeah that's it it's across the street and we own this this is another storage barn and we don't own any of these fields i don't know where we own we own one field but i don't know what we own um so do you own this i don't know i guess i didn't check to see And let's look at production. Okay. We have the crop calendar, the weather, what 
This is your vehicles over. This is your money, your barn. Contracts. Production chains, none. Because I don't think we own any. So. It's nice. So everyone, this is agriculture land. So we had a little look around. Oh, that's where my <laughs> my vehicle like swerved around. And it was a really sad shot for me. And I couldn't actually get out of farm sim for a few days. Because it's, it's pretty hard for me. Losing pets and having to deal with um, sick pets and... My, my kids and I actually were going to adopt a hamster, um, um, like a month ago, last month. We were thinking about adopting a hamster, but, um, long story short, um, that, um, the, we were adopting through, I was going to adopt through this rescue, and the person at the rescue was it, was just, absolutely was asking and it's fine to ask a bunch of questions but she was asking me what pets i had and wanted to go into detail and wanted to know how many of my animals have died in my hands and a bunch of other stuff to adopt a hamster and i'm an open person and i showed her what you know what the animal would be going in you know the the cage and all that and you know it was a it's a big it's a big cage. It's a big tank. It's huge. And she's like, well, that's not good enough. It's got to be a bigger, um, a bigger tank. She, um, wanted the minimum, she's saying, was 75 gallons. And my tank is like a nearly, I think nearly, I think it's a 40 gallon breeder. So it's big. It, it, it takes a lot of my table room. It's huge. But that wasn't good enough. And the hamster was actually almost, almost one and a half. So, I mean, Hamsters live for two to two and a half, three years. So we wouldn't have much time with him. And after, you know, after the fact, I, you know, after she says, well, you do, she said I passed, we could adopt him. But the questions and just, it, it turned me off to, you know, it's okay to ask personal questions. And I'm, an, I'm, I told her, you know, and I was very open and everything and, you know, and, and I said, being that he's an older hamster, I think that that cage would be sufficient for him because he can't, you know, being older and a dwarf, they can't, you know, he can't really climb things as well as younger. So I thought that cage would be more, you know, would do good for him. And she said she agreed with me. But just some of the questions she was asking, like, how long have you had your pets? Have you ever had a hamster? How long did your hamsters live? Have you ever adopted from adoption? And I said, yes, I adopted from a couple places. And she wanted references. And and that's fine and dandy. I understand that. But And I'm more than willing to give it all. But I just I just felt interrogated. I <laughs> feel like I was being interrogated by a willing person that would be willing to give updates on the hamster and everything. Being that I was like put on this, like... You know, on this, well, you know, the animal, we want the best for the animal. Yeah, you say that. And I would be more than, and I answered every question, but I feel like I was being, I don't know. I just, I just feel like the place wasn't, wasn't for me. I felt like the adoption place was, you know, and plus they wanted a huge adoption fee for, they, I, he does, the, the animal doesn't come with anything. And I could just go out and adopt one from, the sad part is you could adopt one from a pet shop for less than that and buy the supplies for less than that. So, nothing to all these rescues. There's very good rescues out there, but just this one, and I'm, I'm not going to put anybody names out there because I will never do that because they, they do run a beautiful rescue with lots of beautiful animals. Just how you guys went about doing it was just felt like I was being interrogated in a police room. <laughs> um, so everyone and so after that i don't think i'm going to be adopting any pet <laughs> my dog she just does it every single time i'm not here so everyone this is brooke on agriculture land so please like and subscribe for more content hopefully it won't be sad content <laughs> like this have a good day